Hi, kitty cats. I am Amethyst Herrick, your hostess for Gender Identity Weekly, a weekly discussion about identity and gender from the contributors and guests of the Purple Paw Publications website, genderidentitytoday.com. This content is brought to you by subscribers of genderidentitytoday.com. If you are already a subscriber, first of all, thank you so much for your ongoing support. Subscribers not only receive new content directly to their inboxes as soon as it publishes, but are also able to interact with every contributor directly, which includes me. So if you wanted you know, to harass me, that's the best way. If you would like to support shows just like this one, as well as other podcasts, videos, and written articles by all of our contributors, please consider subscribing using links you're going to find in the show notes. Well, today I am very, very uh, honored to be speaking with Louisa Boya. Hi, Louisa. Hi. So Louisa is a Qigong instructor in Denmark, actually, and also a musician. I actually met uh, Louisa through YouTube, right? Like you do. It is true. You can make friends through YouTube. It's a crazy thing. I've made several. It's sort of surprising. But we connected because I know, um, Louisa, you're very interested in thinking about, I mean, the way you put it, how to be human. And, and in particular, how humans have started to disconnect themselves from the world. And I think that really dovetails with so much of what, you know, some of the thought that I've been doing. So let me start with like the really, you know, the basic question. There had to be something in your life. <laughs> You're already laughing about it. I swear it's a good question. There had to be something in your in your life that made you kind of pause and go, Gosh, why are why are humans like this? Well, what drove that interest in in just sort of the human condition? Mm, yeah, <laughs> a lot a lot of the it's like been ongoing my whole life. I think like from okay from when I started to explore the world as a little little person, <laughs> as a yeah. little child, um, and just exploring like who am I? What do I like? What don't I like? Uh, how is it to be me? And looking at my parents, looking at my peers, looking at my sister, uh, petting my cats. Am I a cat? No, I'm not. I'm a human. What is it to be a human? And um, yeah, uh, so it's it's been ongoing. And I think when I was a teenager, I started to write like my... Uh, my rules of life kind of thing. As a um, teenager. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because I, I I was I saw so many acting in odd ways or like in in ways that I was like this is not contributing to life uh, as I I see it as I enjoy life it's uh, like bullying in the school mm -hmm. and yeah um, and my parents were clashing not really um, communicating and there was a lot of things that like hunched me to there's something uh, there's something rotten in the state of Denmark <laughs> if you can say it like that you know yeah perfect perfect reference <laughs> <laughs> But but as a as a teenager, wow! Because I mean, like as a teenager, I was you know like the deepest thought I think I had as a teenager was like Duran Duran's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I think that's about it. You know, it's it's fairly impressive. I I don't I don't think many teenagers go through that sort of of self introspect self introspection. That's it's impressive. Uh, well, it's. Um... Um, I guess you can say like your tra trauma can get you somewhere, you know? Uh, right. So the clash between the, my, my parents were like, I'm, I have to be the parent. So I was like already oh. like, okay, how, how to deal with this? So yeah. yeah. <laughs> like uh, what, what, what can I do to bring order or make it more wonderful for us to be a family or to be together because my parents are not able to figure that one out. So sure. I was working on that. <laughs> yeah. Did you, 
the, that's a ends up being somewhat of a common theme among children these days. Do you just out of curiosity? Do you, if you don't like the question, tell me you don't want to answer it. But like, do you still have communication with your parents, or did that end up being sort of sort of a, a, a dividing factor between you and your parents? I still speak with my parents. Uh, my father was actually just here in the weekend. It was very okay. nice. So uh, yeah, um, okay. he's a he's. <laughs> I was going to say he's a big boy, but he he <laughs> likes to play. He likes to play, even though he's past uh, seventy. Mm. Uh, he's just um, yeah playful. Um, yeah, <laughs> and okay. yeah, and my mother. We've been through the last couple of months. Have been through some uh, therapy together. But having a pause right now. What so, together? Yeah, yeah did... some uh, mediation. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, to to get to communicate better together. Yeah, um, because Is... I've been <laughs> I've not been uh, so well communicating with my mother. I have some some issues there. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah. yeah, like we all do. But did gosh, is this common for? people in Denmark? Because I mean, I'm hearing a, a remarkable, to me, a remarkable amount of of introspection as a teenager. And now you have two parents willing to work with you on, on healing traumas. I mean, I've got to tell you, it, I, I hate to display like my US, you know, I don't know what, I, what word I want to use there, but it's not going to be a kind one. <laughs> Like, that's just, you just don't do that in the U.S. You're like, no, 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 no. I had problems with my parents and I'm just going to go my separate ways and and we'll never discuss it till they're dead. Mm. I'm surprised. I mean, I'm glad for you. <laughs> it is a bit, you know, it's not, it's not sheer and fun. It's, it's dreadful and hard and a lot of uh, emotions uh, and a lot of anger and grief and mourning and it's it's a uh, it's a lot but yeah, yeah it's uh, uh it's it's only my mother who is like interested but it's it seems like my father also is interested in his own way even though he's like no i'm i'm not going to grow and develop or learn anything new because i'm old but still, but still, it's like if I try with the NVC, the nonviolent communication, and mm -hmm. and and try to speak with him about feelings and needs, then he can start opening up a bit. But it's mm -hmm. he has his his old ways. I can see that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, I wanted you you broke into the idea. So nonviolent communication or NVC. <clears throat> have you you studied this formally or or have you was it informal the yeah, um, that, word, that in, question informal. come at, okay <laughs> like yoda did i sound at that point and apologize i do so um because <laughs> you've mentioned envy so nonviolent communication and then giraffe language is how you put it so i saw the giraffe versus jackals um type of communication which incidentally i just want to Point. I saw I saw the way that you came into the Google Doc here. You are called anonymous jackal. Oh, I thought that was unfair. <laughs> I thought it was a bit unfair. Was I'm like, no, I no, was no. like, who's that? Okay, whatever. <laughs> You're supposed to be anonymous giraffe. What in the world, Google? Well done. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so can can you can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I mean, I can look it up, but you know, to tell us why why. Nonviolent communication is is important to you and and important to to being a human. Yeah, it's it's very much aligned with the how to be human. Um, in my in my honest opinion, <laughs> uh, because it is uh, connecting with uh, with your emotions, your feelings mm -hmm. uh, in the body, and to your needs. What's what's actually going on? What do you actually need in your life to? have a more wonderful life and how can other people contribute to your well-being and how can you mm. contribute to others well-beings um and uh, i figured well i heard it like a couple of times through my upbringing 
Uh, but I was like, yeah, it's something with feelings, whatever, you know, dismiss. And then I was in a really, really big clash. Like uh, we talked on earlier, like you need, <laughs> you need to, to get out of your comfort zone. Or like mm-hmm. I was in a situation I could not figure out, like both of us were like, oh, we are so good speaking with the human. Why can we not speak together? What's what's clashing here and i was like ah, i heard about this uh, nvc maybe i should try look into it because it's something with communication so um, it might be helpful in my situation and i start looking into it about five years ago and i've been uh, studying uh, it by myself and now i have a discord group uh, i you know i had the book now in danish but yeah <laughs> and um yeah, having online weekly meetings. And yesterday I had the first workshop in English. And yeah, it's it's, wow. uh, it's very fun. Uh, I really enjoy it. Um, and uh, I really want to contribute to other well-beings. And I think this is a very, very good uh, strategy for for getting into what's, what's uh, alive in us. Uh, so we can live to right. our fullest. Yeah. Yeah. The the phrase that stood out to me there was you you wanted to contribute to somebody else's well-being. I mean, and that's part of the idea of, of MVC. I don't one of the thoughts that's been rolling around my head recently is how like that's really what we don't do. What what we do is try to optimize our own well-being, even if it takes, you know, making other people's well-being drop. I'm not even sure what the question I want to ask here is because it's like, (laughs) again, I mean, like that's, that seems to be a a real problem just with the Western, Western culture is the idea that we, that we don't need to contribute to other people's well-being. Like that's what they have to do. Mm. We're just going to take care of ourselves. So let me, let me stop. Cause, cause what, what is your thought on that? Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a bit difficult because we live so isolated nowadays, like in each in our home and we can actually li- not go out and meet other people because we can do everything right here for ourselves right. with ourselves and don't need need anybody else but yeah. i feel uh, a deep longing for having that tribe feeling like i need to find my people like i need yeah. to find some people i can enjoy uh, being around and uh, share and interact and connect with other people and i i am trying that in my real life or like in 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 real life and online uh, yeah. so it's a bit it's a it's a new way of being human today because we have our real life and our online life and it's yes. a, a bit of a hassle sometimes so i had to figure that one out um and yes i i uh, i do see the like i i have enough in myself i can i have all i need kind of thing but we also need connection. We need uh, love and care, attention, to be seen, to be heard, communication with other people. Um, and to have that, I never say the word right, reciprocity. Yes. <laughs> reciprocity. <laughs> reciprocity, yeah. Yeah. So. It's, I mean, it's funny. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to figure out even what I wanted to say on the... You mentioned a sense of isolation, which we get, but it's so interesting. Each of us has this right here that dings like 80 times an hour and makes us feel less isolated. And yet at the same time, sorry, folks, if you're listening to this on audio, I held up a telephone. (laughs) Each of us has a cell phone that dings 80 times an hour when somebody likes your Twitter post or whatever. Forgive me, don't don't post on Twitter, folks. All right, don't do that. <laughs> but it's 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 a way that 
it's a way that we try to combat isolation, and yet I think it exacerbates it because we're we're not really connecting with a person. You know, we're connecting with a Twitter post or whatever it is, and and uh, how so? It, do you think that the that the isolation is best addressed by by personal communication, face to face communication? It it could also be like uh, us right now, like speaking with each other, even though it's okay. on a screen, but uh, but listening to each other and listening to what what we are feeling and needing. Yeah, um, and and I think a lot. Of, a lot of people are going to the debate or to the like, I like this, I like that. This is how I really see the world. This is how it's supposed to be. Or uh, this is right, this is wrong uh, mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, thinking. And the debate um, mode, <laughs> so to say, I don't know how to say. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, we like to debate like who's right, playing the game of who's right, instead of playing the game of how to make life more wonderful. So, so, so that's, that's, that's what I'm seeing a lot. Like also, also why I wanted to speak with you and not just commenting on your stuff, because I was like, I really, <laughs> I really don't want to, because on, on text, you can seem so rude or like it can come out in, in, in a not so well behaved manner. Or like, if you write it, right. you have, you have a tone in mind when you write it, but maybe the person reading has another tone of voice when they're reading it so it can be a lot of clashes there uh, with the communication uh, so that's why i wanted to speak with you instead because I, I yeah i just feel so much for you like you find you you're trying to find your way in life and that it's it's uh yeah you say so many things that i'm like this is great and then i was like ah I'm not sure about this, but I don't want to say like, oh, you're wrong kind of thing. Like uh, you're doing it wrong, but I am I am also having my needs for like protection, for example, protection mm -hmm. of the children. And I have been speaking with uh, one of my uh, trans friends and he was like, well, it's <laughs> it's been pretty shit transitioning as a, an adult because then you have got to go through two puberties yes and i was like yeah but isn't that better to do that instead of like transition as a child and then maybe figure out that you were not trans and you want to detransition or yeah like i there are so many things i'm like ah oh, this is uh very important also because in my messiness in my upbringing and how to be me i was like oh i really don't like my myself being a woman mm -hmm. um i had a really hard time with the hormones um so and i really i really didn't want my my breasts and i think sure. if i if i grew up today in america maybe i would have removed my breast but today i can i have a three-year-old son and i breastfeed him so i would not have been able to do that so right. there's there's so and i didn't know i was like i don't want to have children because i looked at my parents i was like what a mess you know but right. you, you grow and you learn and i got pregnant and had my son and i'm happy and i'm i really love him and i love my husband and you know so i think there are so many ways if i if i have known knew if i have known um, that there was a feminine and uh, masculine energy within all of us. I, I, I think I would have been more like, it's okay. Like, it's okay to be, to be me with the feminine and the masculine energy in yeah. me. But I was like looking at my mother and I had this like enemy image, like she's horrible kind of thing. So mm. I don't want to be my, like my mother because it's, ah, so I want to be a man. You know, because then it's not my mother. So, so I think that's kind of, um, yeah, I, I think there are so many things in it. Like we have all our traumas and all our, uh, 
ways of going through life. And I think it's it can be very, very vulnerable as a teenager to go and mi- yeah, mix in with the hormones and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So right, right. I cannot remember if I posted on you, some of your videos uh, about the, the hormone stuff. Like only not for children, but it's okay with adults. When you have gone through and figure more out of life and your brain right, is developed right. and all of that, that's just like, because I'm so interested in like how to be human, how do we grow, how do we develop, develop. And yeah, so that's just oh, it's so it's so important to me, you know, because it yeah. is. The, you know, I mm, the I don't. So this process never ends, though, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're five years old, you start the, you looking at your your parents or something and saying, "Well, I don't. I just don't want to do that." Um, <laughs> And then at 12, you you know, whenever you start going through puberty, because it was not 12 for me, it was more like 14, you know, you have a new set of of uh, of conditions, I guess. Then you go to college and then you get a job or whatever, or you don't, you know, whatever. But I mean, I think I've had a, not I think, I know that I have had a common thread that's that's been with me since I was four years old when I originally thought... I was a girl to 52 years old when I said, okay, now it's finally time to transition. And I understand what you're saying. This is not intended to be a debate, by the way, (laughs) just so you know. Yeah. I just really, I understand your uh, story. Like it's, it's, uh, I don't want to interrupt you, but it's, Mm. it's like, it's, um, how to say, I want to celebrate your journey. Mm. And share my journey, kind of thing, you know. <laughs> well, of course, no, yeah. and and I, I mean, I appreciate because at this point you identify as a woman. I mean, you call yourself a woman, right? I mean, yeah, I have, I have come to terms with me being a woman. It's like I accept myself as a woman now. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. okay. So yeah, but, but you had mentioned episodes of gender dysphoria, and I, th- I think those are very common. I know that that. You know, at this point now, gender dysphoria is classified as a pathology that we we should not have gender dysphoria. And if we did, if we we are in some way, you know, sick or ill. But I I believe gender dysphoria is so common. You know, e- even if it's just you don't you don't like your your breasts growing, you don't like. I mean, it can be so many things. I'm losing my hair, which I didn't, but you know. It's, that's gender dysphoric um, or can, can cause dysphoria. So many things that, that cisgender people feel having to do with gender. Um, and I think where I, all I wanted to go with this is, is, again, not to debate anything, but certainly to say that that I believe how to be human implies constantly revising what it means, how to be human you you found peace in who you are and that's good i'm so glad because i didn't until pretty much last year at you know 53 years old which is a bummer you know nobody should have to go 53 years before saying yeah i think i can accept being this person i am and the sad thing is that you know this is 53 years old what do i got 20 more years Hopefully, you know, so I don't know how to be human is never is never ending. It, you have to keep doing that, uh, that introspection and you have to keep communicating. I think exactly what you're saying. Um, before I want to move on to something else, but before I do, do, is there any, was there any part of that you're, that you're like, oh no, I need to answer that. Um, <laughs> Well, yeah, it, it's, it is an ongoing uh, because it's like our feelings change every now and then. And when right. you have fulfilled a need, maybe you have another one coming up, uh, maybe try different strategies to meet a need. And it takes some yeah. time to figure out which one. And, you know, so there is a lot. It is a hassle to be a human and trying to feel uh, fulfill your needs. 
right. without harming anyone or like yourself or others like it can right. you can easily harm some someone in the process um yeah so uh yeah it is it is an ongoing process and i think also with the aspect of uh, uh yin and yang like mm. we have a uh, yin and yang in um uh, in our life, like it's coming up and down, like are uh, your energy more internal or external? Um, like where are you in life and where are you in the seasons? Like we're right. going into autumn now in the, well, upper the northern, head, hemisphere, hemisphere, yeah. no, northern hemisphere. So now we're going into the more introspection or like in, internal um and in the spring it's coming out uh, you know so it's it's the the dance of life or the rhythm cycles of life um, yes yeah you you hit upon one of my favorite topics there cyclicity it's the word I, is the word i like to use hmm. the it's inter what you what you started talking about was where i wanted to go <laughs> what i was going to start talking or asking about be, because you made a comment about how humans become disconnected from the world is is the phrase that you use, and I and I had asked before, can I clarify this? Do you mean disconnected from nature? And in part, like there will there will likely be people listening to this when you say we're about to enter autumn in in the northern hemisphere, and I think there are probably people who will listen to this and go, so. What do you mean introspective? Like I got a house and a heater. What do you, who the hell cares? There's no seasons anymore because I've got a car and I've got boots and I've got, I don't know, whatever you do to make it through winter. <laughs> that apparently <laughs> went nowhere. But so, so to, what, what is it about being disconnected from nature that is, that makes it more difficult for us to, to figure out who we are? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> it's uh, it's like the, the it's it's changing all the time. So mm. there's like the the only thing that is constant is change. So and we can when we go into nature, we see change all the time. Like in the autumn, yeah. the leaves fall. Everything's fall down, and the harvests uh, with all the food, and the birds are flying, and it's there's a lot going on. Like um, if you go out in nature and observe it, and some animals go uh, hibernation, and some birds fly away, and you know right. it's it's there's a lot uh, a lot a lot of movement, a lot of things going on, and if we go out in nature and connect with nature, we can be part of that uh, cycle and and feel it and and in that um, I, I don't know it's it's really internal feeling connection. Maybe it's just mm -hmm. because I like oh the trees are my friends and they take care of me sure. and, and they the provide me with the clean air and grounding and it's um it's just amazing to be in nature and to to ground and uh connect with nature uh so yeah, I don't know if that answered your question at all, but it, well, it, you know, it, it it at least started it the that observation. So you said you can see leaves fall, um, and I think it's more than just an observation. When when you go out into you know nature and connect with it more deeply, you experience that. You experience the constant change that's occurring. Because you can see, you know, because you're like, where'd all the birds go? Oh, they're flying away. What happened to my tree? It's got no leaves. And I think, um, yeah, I think one of the biggest, the biggest points that I would take from what you, from what you, uh, what you said there is that it's really the experience that does it. And, and it teaches us about our own cyclicity, the cyclicity of life around us. Um, it teaches us. 
I'm laughing already at my little my little joke here. Hang on. It teaches us to realize that that there are more things under heaven and earth, Horatio, than exist in your philosophy. If you're going to use a Hamlet quote, I can certainly use a Hamlet quote as well. There you go. All right. You didn't even laugh initially. I'm like, shoot. I thought we were doing Shakespeare jokes. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite parts from Hamlet, too. You know, right there. Uh, um, <laughs> do, but does, is that is that along the lines of what you're saying? It's really the experience of seeing that 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 there is much more about nature. There is much more about what's going on around us. Um, oh gosh, yeah. here you go. You you said the harvest. This is one thing. The harvest. For most people in the United States, do you know what the harvest is? It's, it's driving down the road to get to like the supermarket and go, oh, look at this. I got mangoes. And then you drive home. But there are no <laughs> mangoes being grown in the U.S. Actually, if there are, if you're out there and you said, no, I grow mangoes. OK, I'm sorry. But <laughs> like we're going out there and, grow, you know, I'm buying stuff at the market and that's all we see. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Yeah, maybe it's because I have a garden. I don't know. And I. I am in the countryside, grew up in the countryside, so it is used to running through the fields of whatever. <laughs> but, right. Yeah. But, I, but I had a conversation with somebody who grew up in Yorkshire County in, in, uh, in, in the UK, in, in, I guess in, in what's England. But, and she mentioned to me uh, that cows were vicious. And I said, cows, what are you talking about? That's not, not cows. She goes, yeah, cows, they'll, they'll knock you down and kick you to death. And I went, that's, wait, cows? No, they're all gentle. And she's like, where'd you grow up? <laughs> I grew up in the city. Why do you ask? And I was like, well, there you go. You never saw cows. And it's true. I'm, I'm not sure I've ever touched a cow. I've never, I'm not sure I've ever been close enough to a cow, even to, to certainly not to be kicked by it, which is fortunate because be a different conversation but mm. so yeah we do i you know it's such a different upbringing you had versus what i had because i grew up in los angeles you know there's no cows there not even at the zoo oh. that's what animals were to me was the zoo ah, what yeah, do we okay. got <laughs> normal animals you see are zebras right <laughs> You grew up with zebras? No, but it was at the L.A. Zoo. That's normal, right? That's the world. <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's really yeah, it's really fun how to like I've been living in in Copenhagen for twelve years of my life mm -hmm. as well. So, and that was a totally different life. Uh, and yeah, you cannot really. It's it's you can kind of feel the seasons in the city. Like Copenhagen is a small. It's just a village, you know, for mm -hmm. from Americans' perspective. Uh, <laughs> to me, it was a big city. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. easy to say, right? Coming from <laughs> Los Angeles, you, which city are you from? It doesn't make a difference. It's a small city, so don't keep going. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it's just a change, and they're like it's uh, the whole in the autumn. It's closing down, going into the winter, the the death hard like dying and then in yes. the spring it's all opening up again and life begins again and you and you have the whole yeah you know life mm -hmm. life and death uh circle um and i i think it's like uh to me the um, being aware of life and death it's it's really like a lot of i don't know maybe it's just people People, uh, people are not so comfortable talking about death. Um, I'm, I'm quite sure. open, <laughs> open about it. It's like I'm excited to what will happen, and many people are afraid. And I think if you're afraid, that's just my perspective. Like if you're afraid of dying, then you're afraid of living. Uh, so you're not really living uh, if you're afraid of dying because yeah. oh, I cannot do that. What if I die? You know. Um, right. So, uh, and that was also like 
why am I uh, why am I recording myself and putting myself out there because it's scary it's really scary and I'm I've been nervous the whole time <laughs> you know <laughs> so so it's it's like why do you do this it's because I want to live my life while I'm here and so this right. this is my experience this is how I've experience life in me from my perspective and I want to share it with my fellow humans and also listen to how they experience their perspective of the human condition, uh, the human life they have. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I'm like, well, if, if I want to know how others are perceiving the world and experiencing the world, um, I guess I also need to share my parts because if I'm just in the corner listening, it's like, what are you doing? You know, you you want that re- reciprocity? I, yeah. can, I really cannot say that word, but yeah, you want that uh, mirroring of um, of other people to like, do you do you also have these needs? Do I also have these right. feelings? Are you right. also a human? Yeah, I'm also a human. Oh, that's great. We can be human together, away. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think you made a great point. The the f- fear of death, first of all. Um, one of the things, shoot, how did you, you brought up that we're going into autumn, but then after that is going to be spring. Oh, I do remember what it was you said. You said that there is the the life and death circle, which which we can observe with plants. Certainly, trees. You know, there's an there's an, an appearance of death. The leaves fall, but then spring come spring comes and the leaves are back. I think um, there's a really in, really profound insight to be to be gleaned from that. Just observing that, because first of all, you see that everything dies, which is a frightening thing, as you mentioned. Everything dies, but it also means that just like winter always comes, so will spring. Spring will always follow winter, and then summer will always follow spring, and then autumn will always follow summer. And, and we, we can count not just on the contraction of our lives, but the periods of growth in our lives. And that adds a perspective to our existence that I think is one of the major things the Western society is missing because we have this, we have this belief that it can always be summer. It can always be, yeah, it's always going to be grow, grow, grow. And mm-hmm. not like uh, retracting or like yeah. coming down again. It's like yeah. and that's also the part of the the yin and yang. You know, it's it, right. and also day and night. You have it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so we yeah. don't notice night either, though, because <laughs> we have alarm clocks and we have lights and you know, like I said, the heater stuff like that. So what? Out of curiosity, what do, what do you do now to continue to connect to nature, especially if you're living in, living in Copenhagen? Oh, uh, it's been uh, it's been a while since I lived there. Uh, mm. <laughs> I live I'm sorry, in, I misunderstood. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's it, it's been a while, but I lived in Copenhagen uh, five, six, five years ago. <laughs> Something okay. like that. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was the other way around. I'm sorry. I thought you grew up in the country. And then you moved to Copenhagen. So I'm sorry. I got yeah, yeah. It. <laughs> I uh, grew up in the country, moved to Copenhagen, and then go back to and the moved country. Moved back. Okay. <laughs> but in another place. So yeah. Uh, so okay. yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. So, so you don't. So at this point, you don't have to do anything. Basically, you look out your window, and everything everything is as it should be. It is. You have nature right there. Yeah, I have blackberries and plums oh. right now and uh, oh. you know everything the i have like huge tomatoes and huge cucumbers i know it's like and the apples are soon there and the pumpkins and everything so yeah. nice i really really like that so i'm going around and picking and my child also really loves it. it's like i picked the 
the blackberries and put it in my hand and eat it. And if I have not picked any, he's just like trying to, he's like, I want more, I want more. Right, right. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. That's so awesome. I really, I really want to contribute to his upbringing in, in learning about about life and about yeah life and death and the cycles and the day and night and why we do as we do as humans yeah. like yeah. yeah we could i mean we could drop down to to religion i mean i think it is religion that that has helped us be more frightened of death by by seeing it as final which is atypical for human human belief that the the one and done kind of thing that's more recent. You don't want to touch that. Uh, I'm just not sure. Like religion, uh, religion got us to fear of death. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> historically, I mean, when when. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I want to back into this and if I want to at all. <laughs> Historically, when Christianity started becoming more popular, which was not, you know, until about the, the third century, for a uh, third, fourth century of the common era. Um, but historically, when it started becoming more popular, you know, there was a belief in reincarnation originally. And, and at some point there were, they, they, codified they made things canon in in the in christianity and uh one of the things they took out was the idea of reincarnation and a pessimistic view of why this would occur is because if you have pagan beliefs which tended to you know older beliefs which tended to see a cyclicity of life you have no really good reason right now to commit yourself to a religion and start doing good and in particular, contributing, you know, wealth to the church. That was the really pessimistic view of why Christianity would want to convert pagans to Christianity. But one of the things that they did was say, no, you have, it's one life. You get this life and you either do good or you do bad. But, but after this life, when you're dead, you go to one of two places. That There's now this binary of life and death, good and evil. And mm. we lose sort of the nuances of, you know, is winter bad? I mean, to, to go back to the ideas of, of cyclicity, you know, when, when you had the harvest and you're going into winter, you'd slaughter your livestock you know, most of the livestock, because you're going to take that meat and you're going to eat it during the winter when you don't have grain or fruit or vegetables. And so it was okay. Dying was okay. But now it isn't with, 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 um, with some of the way that Christianity changed our thoughts on, on death. That is very final. That, that there isn't, you, you get one summer and then it's winter for eternity. <laughs> and I'm curious if that's part of where that comes from as we go, well, of course it can be summer forever because we're going to be dead and then it's winter forever for eternity. Uh -huh. um, I kind of prattled a bit there, but, but I, you know, I feel like maybe that's, that's part of where things started to go wrong, where we started to disconnect is, is in this idea that you only have one shot at this uh -huh. and I don't know. How about if I stopped? Do you, do you have thoughts on this? <laughs> um, you brought up uh, the reincarnation, and I actually thought a bit about that. I spoke with one of my my spiritual friends about reincarnation and the mm -hmm. transgender thing, and uh, how do we with the female and mas uh, the feminine and masculine energies? Uh, how can it be that? Some people have more of the other, and his idea was like, well, we have, I, I, I think it was like three lives in like a, a female body and three lives in a male body or something like that, and then it, you know, it shifts every. I think it was every three. I'm not sure. And some say it's like you're, 
uh, one female, one male, one female, like you shift all the time. Sure. So I, I just, um, yeah, the, I, I don't know if I believe in reincarnation. Uh, I definitely don't believe in heaven and hell. That's okay. That's not my thing. <laughs> um, but I, I do believe in some kind of spirit or soul or yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't. I, it's like pe like humans. That's also part of the uh, constant uh, evolving of human experience. Like we're trying right. to figure out what is this about, and we have a lot of uh, strategies. We have a lot of like theories about maybe we go there, maybe we go there, maybe it's like this uh, or like that, but. I don't think anybody really like nailed it down completely, but I think we have some, you know, it has some sort of truth to it. Um, so it's, it's, it's very, very difficult, but I think like Christ Christianity and the, like the religions, as you said, it's like, it's more like giving money to an institution and not so much about spirituality or like, right. Right. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I guess I just I just wish people would be more <laughs> would be more okay with the with the with death and dying and the cycle and yeah mm -hmm. and it's it's fun you said livestock and you have to kill them and I was like yeah maybe I don't know I've been vegan for ten years now so I don't know but uh... <laughs> well I'm, I'm going I mean I'm going back not even all that. Far. I mean, certainly within the last, say, four or five hundred years, we didn't have heated, like big, huge buildings where you have your thousand head of livestock that you're just going to be able to feed them for the winter. Hmm. We just didn't have the ability to to store that much grain to support all of the livestock for the winter. And so as a result, you would kill the oldest ones so that you could eat them. I'm not saying, you know. I'm out there killing livestock, just, just, you know, just to make this so that you and I are, are, you know, on, on the right page there, but it's not like I'm doing this, but it, it was, it was a, a big practice. You, you bring in the harvest and then part of what you did after the harvest was figure out how you're going to make it through the winter. Mm, and yeah. some of that was, well, how much grain do we have? Are we going to feed this to livestock? Are we going to feed this to a sheep? Or are we going to feed it to grandma so that she makes it through the winter? So yeah, we don't have the immediacy. And I'm not saying we should, that we like every time you step out the door, you <laughs> should worry about dying like immediate. But we don't have the immediacy of, of death. We don't have the, I'm trying to, I don't know how to say it. it it's not at the forefront of our mind because we have so many luxuries and so it's too i don't know what i'm gonna say but whatever it what was about to come out of my mouth would probably have to be edited anyway so <laughs> we we're divorced from the cyclicity we're divorced from seeing that nature is the way it is because that's the way it is and we've pulled back from that and and uh i think that affects us psychologically physically in many ways so yeah, um, that's why like it's normal. I don't know uh, how it is in U uh, in the U.S., but in Denmark, it's like normal to be on antidepressant mm -hmm. or to be stressed to like have take time out of work because you are some kind of not mentally well. Um, yeah. And I I, uh, I see that as a part of uh, us as a, a species or like humans trying to figure out a new way to live our lives because the old way of living is not working anymore. The society we built 
around the efficiency, the grow, 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 like the, yeah. the uh, internal summer, like uh, how do you say internal summer time, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, like grow all the time and no like uh, rehab or like no coming back, no introspection, no right. like it's uh it's it's making us sick it's making us uh, it is. <laughs> it's making us not well so i think it's it's very important we we take it as a, a very serious um a notch or hint to we're doing something completely wrong uh, like right. i know like not speaking about right and wrong but it's it's not healthy it's yeah. unhealthy this condition we made this human way like just go to work pay your bills uh, eat sleep you know blah. no right. no connection no going to nature no uh, like closing down in the winter or like it's yeah. so unnatural and so disconnecting and i i really think that we need more connection mm-hmm. in as a human species, uh, because like all the young people today have anxiety and depression because they're scrolling on Instagram all the time and seeing all these uh, fake uh, faces with the with all the the filters and the makeup filters. and Thank yeah <laughs> the filters and makeup and all that I don't yep. have so <laughs> so I re- I I think it's it's really really important uh, to to do to be real and and talk about the, the the trauma talk about the the death and all the shit of life you know all the right. all the all the so called bad stuff but it it also help us grow into who we are so it's mm-hmm. not it's not like it's all bad and we need to fix it it's more like there is something that could be better how do we go from here? How yes. do we develop? Yeah. So it's more of a journey and not so much how do I fix this problem kind of thing. So it's yeah. also like a shift in the mind. So, um, yeah, I, I there was something earlier you said and I wanted, and now I lost it. Um, I wanted to uh, talk about something, but yeah, <laughs> maybe it will come back. I don't know. <laughs> Do you, can can I make it since you since you love to garden, uh, yeah. I, I want to make a, a gardening analogy because I read this somewhere, and I thought it was the greatest way to describe something because our lives are are just strings of experiences. They're real. I mean, they're really nothing more than well, strings of experiences, and some the experiences on their own are they're amoral. They have no, it's not right or wrong. You know, we, we give them, we give them meaning through our, our own context and I'll get mm. where I'm going to go. I promise here I am. The way that the, the way that what I read put it was that some experiences, some experiences are like, are like corn growing or whatever plants growing and you can harvest something from that. Now you got corn that you can eat and go, Oh dang, that's good corn. And some experiences are valuable only as compost. That that you take those experiences and you let them rot. For anybody who's not like aware of what compost is, <laughs> it's when you take all the stuff and you let you know all the the supposed waste materials from gardening or your kitchen, and you put it in one place and it all rots. And then you have some of the most amazing fertilizer i mean you you help me out you you might know this better but you have some of the most amazing fertilizer and it came from from last year's crops you know what what came from the kitchens you know the supposed waste stuff so we have experiences that are good for growing um you know corn and then we have experiences that are only that may only be valuable as compost but that experience is still valuable because it contributes to to the other exper- the other experiences that 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 do grow. So yeah, to life. Yes, it's right. life life serving. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so. and compost r- things rotting. You know, we think of that as oh, that's terrible. That's death. No, that <laughs> death contributes further to to life. So yeah. 
I thought that was a beautiful way to describe something. I got that from a Druid book. So <laughs> it's a good one. Mm. So yeah, that's uh that's that's quite amazing to like I it's fun with the garden analogy analogy. It's like I tried to plant out um uh, pumpkins in all these small containers and I thought I filled it up with some really good soil um, and there was only a few of them coming up and I was like oh dang I had such a good experience with it last time and now it's not really going anywhere and I, I looked in my compost uh, bin and yeah. they grew so I so they were growing in the compost bin. Right, sure. And I took I took the the pumpkin uh, seedlings from the compost sure. and put it out oh. and planted it in my garden. And I was like, ah, okay, maybe maybe nature is trying to tell me I don't have to do such a big effort. It will mm. come. It will come to me. Um, yeah. Nature supplies. And it yeah. provides supplies. You know, it's it's all mm -hmm. there. There's such an abundance if we look at the right places. Like, right. If I if I didn't look and just pour compost or like the waste on top of the seedlings and I didn't see them, then they were just, you know, not growing into new pumpkins. But right. I, I I looked at it and I saw it and I took them up and I planted them out so they could grow in my garden. Um, that's a beautiful was, insight yeah, yeah it's, it was like wow amazing and I you know I knew that pumpkins they really like like a lot of fertilizer a lot of compost they can grow in the compost bin you know so uh, yeah I was like okay, that, okay. Well, <laughs> that's, that, <nice. laughs> that's good insight too because we've we like I do none of the gardening I'm saying we but like you know my wife is gonna listen to this and go yeah why don't you go out and pull some weeds and I'll be like, no because I'm kind of a delicate you know flower <laughs> but I will tell her I'll say so you know it turns out they want a lot of compost <laughs> because we had some growing in the front and, and it, like I have no idea the quality of the soil out there and when I'm pointing you're like yeah I don't know either because I have been to your house which admittedly is true but come by if you're ever here i mean by all means you know drop by um but i think she moved the pumpkins in the back and and so now we'll now we have some good information use more compost thank yeah. you it's a uh, it's very nice i make also compost for the or the 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 nettles stinging nettles mm -hmm. yeah. make some really really uh, extremely good fertilizer so so you can make fertilizers from a lot of weeds, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's very nice. <laughs> I like no. uh, I like permaculture yes. thinking. It's it's yeah. very nice. So I don't do much of the, how to say, picking of the weeds. I just... Sure, sure. I just let it be there. It's like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> right. And, and the fairies love it much better, too. So yeah, there's the so many, so many beautiful flowers, even though it's like some of them are tiny, but it's like, if you really go out in nature and look, you will see that there are so many different flowers in all colors. And yeah, it's, it's just beautiful. It's really lovely. I really enjoy connecting with the nature. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got to know, this will, this will probably be my last question, but what, What's the what's your favorite flower when you go out in nature? What's and it? I don't even have to know the plant. Just what does it look like? Oh my god, there are so many beautiful ones. Um, but like the the how do you say that the, the the ones that just grows? Yeah. In my yeah. the first thing that pops in my mind is the sequoia. Sequoia, sequoia. I'm not sure the English name. Um, okay. But sequoia is like, it's it's a mix between uh, purple and blue, like violet. Uh, oh, but it's it's a uh, it's very beautiful. Uh, I really love it. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I had I just got a snail. Uh, I'm not sure the words in English, but it's it's actually like a, a purple flower, and it like like a vine thing, like or mm, like a sure crawling thing 
and yeah. I planted it out. I got it from a one here in the village, and it's so beautiful. It's like purple uh, tr trumpet kind of thing, and in the center, it looks like it's a uh, light, like it's wow. illuminating. It's wow, extremely beautiful. Yeah, but that's not native, but it's it's beautiful. So, will you will you send me a, will you send me a photograph? I'd love to yeah, see. Yeah, sure, sure. The um, you, you know, of course, that when you said all your favorite flowers are purple, <laughs> it did get me right here. You know, it did. So, yeah, and hopefully you're not saying that because because you're, you're just like, well, I don't know. I'm talking to Amethysta. Let's see, what do I like? Whatever I like, it's purple. <laughs> what are you asking about? Cars? Yeah, purple cars. Mm -hmm. Eggs? Yeah, purple <laughs> eggs. I love purple eggs. Crayons, purple crayons. Mm. Oh, all of them. It's all of it. Yeah. Yeah, so. it's um, yeah. Actually, a lot of my favorite plants are purple, purple and blue. Good. Purple and blue, <laughs> I think, is the is the main thing. There, That's but perfect. I actually like when I when I now here I feel like so old when I talk about flowers. It's like oh, I just turned sixty or something. Uh, but <laughs> it's like only old people go around in the garden taking pictures oh, of the sure, flowers. Sure. <laughs> like oh yeah but uh now i actually enjoy um uh, pink flowers or like baby okay. pink uh, mm -hmm. I, sure. I find them beautiful now it's like i've been so not okay with my feminine side so it's like all yeah. that is like culturally uh pointing to the feminine stuff it's like yeah right. it's like right. no dresses no makeup no pink no red no you know bleh. Uh, so, <laughs> but now I'm like, okay, I actually, I, I, I'm actually okay with pink. I'm mm -hmm. still a bit with the red. Red is like, I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I will go ahead and, uh, and shut down our conversation. Um, first of all, Louisa, thank you so much for talking to me. Um, I am so. I am Amethyst Herrick. You've been listening to Gender Identity Weekly. I've been speaking with Luisa Boya about uh, primarily how to be human, but also gardening and uh, many other fun topics. So thank you to all of our listeners as well. Thanks, Luisa. Thank you.